Yeah, I would say for mental health providers, and this probably extends to providers more generally, if people have kids or they're taking care of their elderly parents, it's really, I think it's really helpful to start by just understanding how our minds work. And there are some basic things that can really help us illuminate, you know, how our minds work so that we can work with them. Uh, just as an example, you know, fear is a normal adaptive response. There's something really dangerous out there right now. So we normally have these fear responses, but that, um, that more primitive part of the brain that, you know, that, that fear response and survival part of the brain actually can make our thinking parts of our brain go offline when we don't understand how they work. And the piece there that's missing right now is information. So, you know, our thinking and planning brains need information and they need accurate information to plan. And if they don't have that accurate information, they're going to start spinning out in what if loops, like what if this, what if that. So we can think of fear, survival plus uncertainty leads to anxiety, right? So that's a, that's a take home for people just to understand that, oh, there's uncertainty here. Can I learn to be with that uncertainty? Um, and can that help me kind of keep myself regulated? You know, even taking a few deep breaths, noticing, okay, I don't know what I need to know right now but getting worked up about it's only gonna make things worse. Can that help me kind of settle and then ask, okay, what do I actually know right now and dial it back, you know, instead of planning out a month or two weeks, dialing it back to, okay, do I know enough to plan for next week? And if I don't, dialing it back, do I know enough to plan for today? And if I don't, dialing it back to, what do I know right now? You know, can I plan for this next hour? And we, we can always find, you know, if you dial it back to this moment, right? We know, oh, am I hungry? Am I thirsty, right? So there's information that we can act on. And then we can start expanding it from there. So one thing I would suggest is that, you know, we have this opportunity, whenever our world is turned upside down, we have an opportunity to do three things. One is, we can shift a little bit and we fall back into our old habits. We can shift a little bit and fall into other habits that aren't helpful for us. Or we could actually shift and transform. And so, you know, let's take that second category. I see a lot of people getting addicted to the news and something from a neuroscience perspective that's really helpful is to see, you know, our brains actually treat the news like a slot machine. So if you play the slot machine, you don't know when you're going to win. If you start watching the news, you don't know when a big headline is going to hit. But when that big headline hits, your, your brain says, oh, I just won the jackpot because I got some information. So then we start checking the news all the time and then we get strung out on the news. We, we become, you know, that news becomes the, the jackpot for us or the casino. So a simple thing that we can do here is just understand that, okay, this is my brain thinking that the news is a casino. And we can, we can dial it back and say, okay, I'm going to check the news twice a day. Because if we check it twice a day, we're guaranteed that there's going to be some new information. And so it's not going to treat it as, oh, maybe there's going to be some big news when I check. There's always going to be some something useful. And then as the news cycle starts to calm down a bit, we dial it back from there, maybe checking it once a day, right? And that helps us not get stuck in that new kind of habit of, you know, becoming a news junkie. Uh, information is helpful. Getting addicted to checking our news feeds all the time, not so helpful. Yeah. The second piece I would say here is, is really having people understand you know, something that I learned from my own research that was really was mind blowing was that, you know, we have these habit loops that get formed to help us survive, right? These uh, trigger behavior reward, very, very basic learning habit loops, right? We see food, we eat the food, and this stomach sends this dopamine signal to our brain that says, remember what you ate and where you found it. So very, very basic learning process. Same for avoiding danger, right? We see the danger, we run away, and we live to, um, to avoid danger in the future, right? There's the reward there. What our brains can do is actually um, use negative emotions and uh, the mental behavior that can arise. So sometimes we think of physical behaviors as this reward-based learning, but in fact, mental behaviors can do the same thing. Worry is one of the key or one of the prime mental behaviors that I'm seeing right now, where this negative emotion, whether it's fear or anxiety arises, that triggers the mental behavior of worry. And that the reward, we think, well, what's rewarding about worry? <laughs> Not much. But our brains actually treat this as doing something, right? It makes us feel like we're in control because we're at least thinking. We're like, oh, maybe I could figure this out. But the problem with worry is it doesn't actually help us figure things out. In fact, it makes our thinking brain go offline. So it's harder to actually think and plan. 
So the, what I would say here is it's really helpful just to recognize, oh, these worry habit loops can actually you know, be self-perpetuating. We can get into a, a habit of worry that's not that helpful for us. When we can see that clearly, we can learn to start to step out of those habit loops themselves.